Hey friends, Michael Eldritch here, Hounds of Snake, and this is just a little side note, quick, hopefully quick video about choices you can make with your voice. These are voice choices, because I, you know, I talk about the perfect American accent, and again, I always, often at least, describe it as not truly perfect, but just most generic and quintessential, very, the radio, uh, you know, newscaster accent, rather than a regional accent or something more particular that's american but really all accents are perfect as i always always say and that is very true you already sound perfect but this is a channel a playlist at least for how you can learn this particular perfect american accent but i'll tell you it's more than just that because you can't simply mimic me or emulate someone who has a quintessential American accent. You also have to have your specific vocal qualities and mannerisms that make you you, that make you who you are. And these won't necessarily be consciously chosen, but their habits is what they are. But all habits can be influenced over time. So there's different, I think of them as dials in your voice, dials that you can influence. And uh, I think that there's four or five or six, depending on how you parse them out, depending on how you divide them and quantify them or describe them. And uh, you can decide for yourself where you want these dials to be. It's still your authentic voice. You're just creating a new habit for it. And people say, oh, you shouldn't fake that. You're faking your voice if you do that. Well, I don't think so, because an accent isn't faking a voice. It's choosing to speak in a certain way. Just as maybe it's a poor analogy, but wearing clothes isn't faking your body. It's just presenting your body in a certain way. And uh, there's no accent equivalent for nudity. But you get the idea that what I'm saying, which is that you can choose how to present yourself, or you can kind of just wear whatever you have on. And there's really nothing wrong with that. There isn't. But there's a few things you can influence. So one is you can influence your overall pitch, this dial. It can start to be up higher up here. It can be more real, like in this high. For me, I have to really squeeze it upward. And I talk about more like this. And this is a little bit closer to a pitch that might sound like I did some years back. Um, or I can relax into my lower register. And that's actually my more natural register. If I let myself speak in my lower register, I feel my Adam's apple drop down to its resting position. And so it's actually more comfortable for me. But I don't always want to do that because a lot of times I'll get really excited. And when I'm excited my voice goes back up again, so the pitch goes up. So there's nothing wrong with deciding how high or how low you want your pitch to be, as long as it still feels natural to you. As long as it still feels natural to you. The second one is the breathiness of your voice. Almost every voice has some amount of extra air coming through it. Now, if it's completely air, then it's unvoiced, and it's a whisper. So a whisper is like this, like we try to do, people try to do an ASMR. It's unvoiced. If it's unvoiced, the vocal cords are not vibrating together. You're just pushing air out. The larynx isn't doing its job. So we don't want to do that much. But that's what the extra air adds to it. But at the same time, if we have just completely a voice without any extra air, it's hard for me to even do it. An example would be a little bit like Saruman, the bad wizard in Lord of the Rings. Kind of trumpety, almost operatic. I am Saruman, and you will... You will bow before the power of Mordor. It's powerful, and in this case, it's also a, it's a deep voice. Uh, but there's no extra breathiness. There's no wasted air. And I actually think that it can be a little bit more pl uh, pleasing and attractive and friendly to have a little bit of wasted air because people who are charismatic and easy to get along with 
and have good communication skills, oftentimes they will have a little bit of breathiness in their voice, a little extra air, not this much always. Sometimes it will be more like this. I'll find myself just naturally having a much higher amount of breathiness. And that's okay. If it feels natural to me, that's how I'll be talking. And I'll let it go on for as long as that feels natural, as long as it's comfortable for me and comfortable for other people. That's your only metrics you should care about, is what feels pleasing and attractive to you, what feels right with the circumstances, and what works and, and is natural again. There's also ways of speaking where you can modulate, you can change those dials. So a great speaker, in my view, is former President Barack Obama, who would often, when making a point, dial up the breathiness as though it was almost a whisper. And he would say something like, and you know, I've spoken to a lot of people around the country, and they all agree that's the kind of thing that we need to work on. And I think they're right. Now, I'm not doing a very good job. That's not a very good, that's not even, that's not even an impression, but that's just an example exaggerated about how you can change that dial, if you will, of how much breathiness. Now, in that case, it's almost not even just a whisper. It's almost more of a wheeze because the air is forced out a little bit. But there's different ways to modulate your voice. When people think of modulating your voice, another cat jumped up, they will often think of just going up and down with your tone and sometimes having a high pitch and other times going low. You can do a little bit of that. Modulating your pitch within a sentence or within a paragraph is good to a certain extent, but I don't know if you want to do it as much as the classic newscaster Oh, try, my cat is is wheezing a little bit himself, actually. Because the classic newscaster thing of talking very much like this only really works for certain people, and other people it can sound inauthentic or otherwise just too theatrical and ostentatious, even if it's done more silent, more quietly. But again, it depends on what works for you and what feels right for you. So sometimes my pitch will modulate much more than other times. So there's even a modulation of how much we modulate. There's a variation of how much we vary. And that's an exciting thing about your voice. Make your voice your own by consciously influencing the habits that you want to have for your voice. And then also deciding which habits you want to allow and not consciously influence and just let them happen however they would happen. Maybe that's all of them. Maybe that's only 10% of them. But that's what's fun about it is it's your voice. Just like it's your body, you can wear whatever clothes you want. It's your voice. You can present it and express it in the way you want as long as it feels proper and natural and good to you and it's comfortable for other people. It's a powerful thing about, about voice related to breathiness is graveliness and i'm trying to think of a great way of how to describe graveliness right now i'm finding myself dialing it up to where i would num other other times normally have it and people think of this as being the morning voice or the movie trailer voice but actually it comes quite naturally to most of us much of the time in fact many times we will find ourselves trying to dial back our natural graveliness. I am finding myself unconsciously, without thinking, pulling back my natural graveliness because of a fear of sounding unfriendly or otherwise in some way too intense. And we don't want to come across as too intense to other people. And that's a good point. And we don't want to come across as overly aggressive, but as long as we can find the right balance and calibrate ourselves for the situation in a way that feels natural to us, again, we can still have a fair amount of natural graveliness if that's part of your vocal repertoire. So those are really most of the main ones that I wanted to get into. And you'll notice, again, with me, 
each of these dials can go up and down in a given day, in a given word, in a given sentence. And that's part of the fun of language, is that we like to listen to, la- to words, to people whose language, whose expression is more expressive, is more dynamic. That's why we zone out or tune out when someone is very monotone. If someone just talks like this the whole time, and this is the only way they talk, and they go on about something that is interesting to them, and they give you some details about it, we're not that, we don't want to hear it. Maybe it's a little bit annoying, or maybe it's monotonous, or maybe it's unnatural sounding. But we are emotional beings, we're emotional creatures, emotional species and our voice can reflect that within reason of course so i hope that's at least a little bit interesting as something to think about about how you want to present your voice and i'm just saying find those little niches that are already there in your voice and decide which ones you want to indulge in and which ones you want to continue to repress backward because my theory about it is such as the depth of voice Uh, or graveliness, or breathiness. These are all qualities that we actually all exhibit naturally more than we want. But in order to be more efficient with our breath and have a higher volume for the amount of breath we use, we restrict and inhibit these so that we can be heard more easily. And therefore, our voices end up sounding more mousy or more squeaky or more staccato or less breathy and less textured therefore because we're inhibiting this so decide how much you want to inhibit if any and that's all i have on that topic for now leave any comments you have feel free to like and subscribe i always appreciate it when you do and i'll see you perfect speakers next time i'm michael eldridge thanks for tuning in